okay so this is another method to help us add a node but this time not at the beginning of the list but at the end of the list this is why the method is called add to tell so again there are two scenarios the list could be empty presently or it may have some elements so you can use the is empty to check if not is empty we will do these two statements i will explain this in a moment otherwise do this one now if you notice this is exactly like the uh, add to head in the case of empty therefore there is nothing new it will do exactly as we explained before okay it will create a new node the constructor will initialize the info to the value element assuming it is six then six will be here uh, the next of that node will be null and both head and tail will point to the new node but in case the list is not empty okay let us say it has some elements five eight and three already uh, so it has three nodes uh, this is how we're gonna do it so it will come to the if part in that case not the else part so let's see the the the, 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 the execution of these two statements as usual again always start from the right because it's an assignment statement so new node will create a new node and then SSL node providing element meaning you are calling the middle constructor okay so assuming we are sending a value 10 for element uh, info will be initialized to 10 and next will be what null as I'm sure you will guess because that's what the second constructor will do now uh, the constructor is done so new will return to us the address of the new object where are we saving it we are saying save it in tell.next now this is interesting see tell dot info is three tell dot next presently is null tell dot next is this this variable and you can see it's null so we are saying change it it's no longer going to be null it is going to be the address of the new object so what we have we have tell dot next will point to the new object okay so this is the result of the first statement here but as you can see we are not done yet because tell is still here whereas tell is supposed to point the last node so we need to change tell to be here how can we change tell to point to this node well we want tell to be the same as this reference now what is this reference is tell.next remember tell.info tell.next so all we have to do is to say tell becomes tell.next and that will do the trick and that is exactly what we are doing here we say tell becomes tell.next so the result is therefore tell will move to point to where tell.next was this was tell.next okay so now change tell to become that so both of them will point to the the new node we have just created and this is this is what we wanted actually we want a new node to be added at the end of the list and by the time we do that tell should point to it okay so this is what this method will do uh, i hope it's clear so we have two methods that allow us to add nodes to our list what about deleting a node from the list so again we have two different methods we will start from uh, delete from head before we look at delete from tell so here the idea is we already have a list containing some nodes and we want to delete the node at the beginning of the list now if you think about it there are three possibilities here one scenario is the list is presently empty of course we cannot delete from an empty list so if that is the case 
simply return. Notice that the delete, delete from method is not null, I, I rather it's not void. The idea is we want to delete a node, but at the same time return the information inside that node. Okay, so the delete from head is not a void method. It's deleting the node, yes, but it is also returning the info of the node that has been deleted. Now, if the list is empty, as you can see here, there is no node. So there is nothing to delete. But also there is nothing to return. There is no info to return. Therefore, uh, we just say return null, because of course, if you don't return anything, you're going to receive an error saying uh, missing return type. Since the method says it's going to return something, we have to return something. In this case, since there is no return, return, just return null. So this is scenario number one. The list is empty. The second scenario is the list has only one node. Now, if the list has only one node, to delete it, all you have to do is set both the head and tail back to null. Because if you do that, the only one node will have no reference, and therefore it will automatically be garbage collected. It will be deleted by the system automatically. Okay. Uh, but before that, you have to save the info inside that node. Uh, save it, say, in a variable element, so that at the end you can save it an element. Let me show you diagrammatically what we are talking about. This is our scenario. We have only one node, uh, say, containing six. So how do we uh, delete this only one node from the list? To do that, just make the list to be empty. How can we make the list to be empty? Just set head to be null and tail to be null. But before that, save this 6 because you need to return it. The method is not void. It's going to return a value. So that is the first statement here. I say head.info. You can see this 6 can be reached either as head.info or tail.info. It doesn't matter which one you use. So save head.info in a new variable called element. Because what? Because we're going to return it. Okay. So after that, now how do we check that this is the scenario, that we have only one node? Now you can easily check if a list has only one node by checking if head is equal to tail. Okay, so that's what we are doing here. Head equal equal tail. If head equal equal tail, as you can see here, they are equal because they are pointing to the same node. Head is pointing to this node and tail is pointing to this node. Both of them contain the address of this node and therefore their content is the same. If that is the case, it means there is only one node. Therefore, to delete the node, simply clear the list or empty the list. To empty the list, just say head equal to tail equal to null. Okay, uh, I should emphasize that a head equal equal tail actually can mean two things. It can mean the list has one node or the list is empty because here both of them are null. But we have already taken care of the first case. If it's empty, meaning if it is this case, return null. So if we are able to reach here, it means it is not empty. So it can only mean this case, head equal to tail. It means there is only one node. So in that case, this is the only thing you have to do. Okay, the last and the most typical uh, scenario is that the list already has some information. The list, so this is of course the result you will have uh, after doing head equal to tail equal to null. Okay, so you can see this node now has no reference, therefore it's going to be deleted by the system automatically. Okay, the last scenario is where we already have nodes in the list, and we want to delete the first one. How can we delete this node? It's really very easy. All you have to do is 
move head let it not point to this node let it point to this one how can we do that by making head to be equal to head dot next that's what we have here head becomes head dot next so the implication is head will go to where head dot next see this is head dot next this reference so we are saying head should be the same so head should come to the same node okay now if you do that you see this guy now has no reference so it's going to be deleted by the system automatically okay so this is the idea of how to delete the first node in the list okay so uh, either of these two cases now return the element I actually emphasize this head equal to I mean element equal to head dot info applies to both this case and this case okay because the moment it is not empty that's the first thing we do so in this case save six in element same thing here head dot info is six save it in element before moving head to the next so either way at the end return the six or return the element okay i hope that explains the delete from head uh, the last method is delete from tell now delete from tell is slightly more expensive actually than uh, delete from uh, head in the case of singly linked list as we shall explain now uh, again there are three scenarios like the delete from head we can have the list as empty so in that case there is nothing to do it's exactly as i explained before <clears throat> simply return null it could also mean the list has only one node or it has more than one node in either case first save the info of the node before you delete it so since we are deleting from tell the info we need to save actually is tell.info so save tell.info in the element and eventually return it but before you return it you have to delete the node now deleting the node depend on which of the two scenarios is it if head equal to tell it means there is only one node and as we explained before the way to delete that node is simply to empty the list by saying head equal to tell equal to null okay so for these two cases there is no difference between uh, delete from head and delete from tell okay if it's empty there is nothing to do if there's only one node empty the list in both cases the difference is in the third scenario where there are elements but we are still interested in deleting the last node okay let me show you the the uh, scenario we have elements in our list and we want to delete this one now there's a problem here because you see having tell alone doesn't allow us to delete this node to delete this node actually we need to make this variable to be null okay this one i'm pointing to but we cannot reach this variable from tell the only way we can reach this variable unfortunately is we have to look for it starting from head okay so we need a loop we need a loop starting from head that will keep repeating until we reach the second last node only then we can reach this variable and we will set it to null okay so that is why deleting uh, the last node in the case where we have elements already in the list more than one element actually requires a loop so uh, we need a for loop here as you can see but before that we need a variable so here i am defining a new variable temp of type node okay and in the loop as you remember the loop has three components initialization comparison and increment and increment 
So in the initialization part, I am setting or initializing this temp to be equal to head. So you can see temp equal to head means it will point to the same node as head, which may initially the first node. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving this temp to the next, to the next, to the next, until it reaches the second last node. Okay, so the question is, how do we know if temp reaches here? At this point, if you notice, temp.next will be the same as tell. And therefore, our loop should continue as long as temp.next is not equal to tell, which is precisely what we have here as the condition for the for loop. Repeat as long as temp.next is not equal to tell. Okay, now what do you repeat? Nothing actually. As you can see, this is semi this, this semicolon indicates that the loop has no body actually. So it will simply come and do the increment. So what does the increment do? It says term becomes term.next, meaning move term to the next node. Right now, term.next is here. Okay, so let me uh, go through with you what will happen in the case of this list. How will this loop execute? Okay, of course, initially temp has been initialized to head. So it's going to check temp.next. Is it equal to tell? Obviously not, because temp.next is pointing here and tell is pointing here. So not tell is true. It is not equal to tell. So the statement is true. As I said, there is nobody because of this semicolon here. So what it will do is it will uh, do the increment. This is the increment. Term becomes term.next. So term will now become here. It will become like term.next. They will point to the same place. And then we repeat the question. Is term.next not equal to term? Well, term.next is here. It is still not equal to term because term is here. Okay, so the condition is still true. Therefore, move term to the next. So term will now be here. Okay, term will now be here. And then we ask the question again. But this time, the question will return true. Because term.next, as you can see, is the same as tell. Term.next is pointing to the last node, but so also tell. And therefore, they are equal. And therefore, oh, this condition is no longer true. So the loop will stop. Okay, so the loop will stop at this point. Now, when the loop stop, we now have to do the, the deletion. How do we do the deletion? First, we can move temp to come to temp. Okay, because we want this now to be the last node. This is exactly what we have here. Tell becomes temp. So tell becomes temp means tell will not point to this node. It will come to where temp is. Both of them will point to this node. Okay. And the last thing to do is to set this guy to be null. What is this guy? It is either you call it temp.next or tell.next. Doesn't matter which one. Okay, so here it says tell.next becomes null. Okay, so what that means is this guy becomes null. And at this point, this node has no reference, therefore it's going to be garbage collected. And we have achieved our aim. The objective, remember, is to delete the last node. And these statements have done it. So you can see deleting the last node in a single link list actually involve a loop. We have to loop until we reach the second last node, then we will be able to do the deletion. I hope this is clear. Uh, the next method is called print all. Suppose we want to print all the nodes in the list, meaning all the info in the nodes of the list. How can we do that? Actually, very similar to delete from tell that we just saw because again we need a loop. Okay, 
we need a loop uh, starting from head so we define a temporary variable uh, I still no temp equal to head and we're gonna keep repeating this time until temp is null because we want to reach each node we don't want to stop at the second last node we want to reach the last node as well so keep repeating as long as temp is not null okay but this time there is a body to do which is printing the info in the node okay uh, so we're gonna print system out of print temp dot info before we go and do the increment uh, so again to demonstrate to you what is happening I will use a diagram again so suppose this is our list presently containing four nodes and our objective is to print the values six five eight and three how can we do that okay so it says define a temporary variable temp of type node and initially make it equal to head so temp will point to the same location as head okay now we're gonna ask is temp equal to null I mean is it not equal to null yes it is not equal to null it is pointing to a valid node so this statement is true if the condition is true in a for loop what it will do is it will go and implement the body so the body says system dot r dot print temp dot info what is temp dot info temp dot info is six so we are saying print the six therefore it will print six after doing the body it will go and do the increment what does that mean temp becomes temp.next so temp will this is temp and this is temp.next so we are saying temp should become temp.next so temp is going to come to the second node okay so temp will be here again we will ask the condition is the condition true yes temp is not equal to null it is pointing to a valid node so go and do the body which means print temp.info which is five so already we printed six so now print the five and then do the increment meaning move temp to the next so temp will move to the next node ask the question is term not equal to null yes it is not equal to null it's pointing to a valid node so do the body meaning print term that info which is eight so our output so far will be six five eight and then do the increment as you remember the for loop will keep doing this three statement condition if true body increment condition body increment condition as long as the condition is true it will keep repeating this but once the condition becomes false it will exit the loop okay good so we have printed the eight now we will do the condition rather we will do the increment so temp will move to the next and then do the condition is temp not equal to null yes it is not it is pointing to the last node so print temp that info meaning print the tree so our output so far will be six five eight three okay and after that go and do the increment now this is interesting because we are saying temp equal to temp.next right now temp.info is three temp.next as you can see is null so if you say temp becomes temp.next you are saying temp becomes null okay temp becomes null okay the increment will make temp to become null and therefore if you check this condition is temp not null this time it will say no it is null so the condition is false and therefore the loop will stop and you can see at the end of the loop we were able to print the info in our list basically this is what the print all method is supposed to do it's supposed to help us print all the node in the list as you can see you need to traverse the list from beginning until the end okay uh, next method is find we want to find if a particular node is in the list 
and return it if it is in the list okay so for example if you say find 8 it will find the 8 in the list and return it uh, find 3 it will be able to find 3 but if you say find 20 obviously there is no 20 in the list so it's going to return null uh, now notice this method is not boolean uh, because another way to think about define is to tell us whether the the element exists or not uh, but actually this is more useful finding the element and if it exists returning it is more useful than just knowing uh, whether the element exists or not you we're gonna see this much later it may not be apparent right now uh, with just the list of integers uh, because as you can see before you can find a value you have to pass that same value to the method find for me 5 find for me 8 and it will give you the 8 or the 5 depending on what you are looking for if it exists uh, it may look like this method is not very useful because if you already have the 5 why do you need to find it if you can understand what I mean before you can look for a value you have to have it in the first place so if you have it in the first place why are you looking for it okay it looks like this is useless isn't it but actually it is a very useful method let me explain why uh, suppose these values are not just integer values but rather they are student objects okay so uh, let's say you go to registrar's office mr shamrani and you want to update your registration he will ask you what is your id and based on your id he will now check his system and retrieve your record and then he will be able to update uh, the record to, to change your registration for example okay so the point i'm i'm making here is this parameter or this argument that you give to the method may not be the full detail uh, in the example i just gave this may be just the id so provide the id to the method but the method will return to you the data in the node which will be the full data not only your id but your name and gpa and the rest of the information so since we are returning the one in the list it will be more complete so this t that we're going to get is a complete record whereas this t that we pass may be just the key field not the complete record so actually this is a very useful method and we shall see how useful it is later in the course okay uh, probably in the lab we shall see okay so let's see how the method work it's very similar to the print all because we need a loop so we define a temporary variable here uh, and then we need a loop starting initializing temp to head uh, there is a slight difference however in the case of the condition in the print all keep repeating until we reach the end until temp becomes null but here keep repeating as long as we have not reached the end and as long as we have not found the item we are searching for because once we find the item we should stop there is no need to continue right yeah so the, the condition has two parts in case we have not reached the end of the list and in case term.info is not equal to our target element okay so if any of this is uh, false we're going to stop immediately if we found stop if it is the end of the list of course stop okay so th that's the condition now what is the increment like before term equal to term.next okay and there is nobody for this loop uh, so it's similar to the one in the lead uh, front tail uh, 
uh, we don't have any statement to do so the semicolon is immediately after the bracket of the loop okay but now after the loop we have to be careful because we don't know which of these two conditions became false was it this one if it is if the loop stop because temp is null it means our target doesn't exist okay but if the loop stop because we have we, because temp that info is equal to target then it means we have found our target so the the value we're going to return it depends on which one therefore after this loop we need an if statement to check which case was it okay so here we are saying if temp is not null if after the loop temp is not null obviously it means it means we have found the target it was this condition that made the loop to stop and therefore to return the the one we found we're gonna say return temp.info as you can see here return temp.info otherwise if temp is equal to null it means the target doesn't exist therefore simply return null this is the idea so this is the the fine method we're gonna practice it in the lab uh, the last method before we close this lecture is general delete method uh, the idea here is instead of deleting the first node or deleting the last node no we give the method a particular value and we say, go and find the node containing this value and delete it that node could be the first node could be the last node could be somewhere in the middle we don't know it may not exist at all okay so this is more general okay delete a particular element meaning delete the node containing the element but again as usual the method is not void it's going to return the info of the node before deleting it okay so here there are a number of scenarios some of which we already have method that can help us to delete so we, in, instead of doing the deletion again we just call those methods let's go through the methods uh, the different scenarios the first scenario is as usual the list could be empty so if it is empty there is nothing to do therefore just return now all right second the target could be the first node in the list how can we know that by checking if head.info equal to target if head.info equal to target it means we want to delete the first node well we already have a method that we can use to, to delete the first node it is called delete from head so if that is the case just call delete from head remember the lead from head is not void as well it's going to give us the, the node that is the, the info in that node so return the result of calling the lead from head okay return the lead from head so this is the second scenario the last the, the third scenario it could be that the target is in the last node but we have a method to delete the last node so again uh, how do we know if it is equal to if it is in the last node by checking if tell dot info equal to the target in that case return the result of delete from tell okay the last scenario is the typical one the node we are trying to delete is somewhere in the middle of the list or it may not exist at all okay so we have to do a search from the second node until maybe second last node if we found we do the deletion otherwise we uh, we return null if we don't find but there is uh, an important point here uh, suppose we search using temp as usual and let's say we're trying to delete five so we keep moving until temp.info equal to target so temp.info here equal to five the problem is how do we delete five if we have only temp 
it's similar to deleting the last node given that we have only 10 we cannot to delete this node actually we need the node before that one so that we can say this dot next becomes that dot this dot next okay so basically the, the point is temp alone is not enough for us this time uh, in the loop we need two references temp and the one before it okay uh, so that when we reach the target we will simply say print dot next change it to becomes temp dot next this is how we're going to do the deletion so here in the else plan we are defining two variables therefore preed and temp preed initially will be head because we are sure the target is not in the first uh, node so we can make preed to be the head temp on the other hand will be head dot next so it will point the second node so this is the initialization preed is the first node temp is the second node okay the condition for the loop is as long as we have not reached the end of the list and as long as we have not found the target so same condition like defined temp is not equal to temp that info is not equal to element okay but the increment involve updating both the two references print and temp okay so we have print becomes print dot next temp becomes temp dot next so these two references will be moving together until either we reach the end of the list in which case temp will be null or we have found the target in which case temp dot info will be equal to our target therefore after this loop we need an if statement to check which case was it is it the loop stop because of this or because of this is each either of this being false okay so that's what we have here if temp is not null so like here temp is equal to our target 5 it's not null okay it's pointing to this node in that case how do we do the deletion as i said very easy we just want this reference to jump and point to this node okay so how can we say that what is this reference it is print that next what is the one we want it to be we want it to be temp dot next therefore all we have to do is to say print dot next becomes temp dot next this is exactly what we have here print dot next becomes temp dot next this is how to delete this node but of course remember to return the info of the node where i just deleted which is temp dot info so here it says return temp dot info return the five okay yeah so this is in case this is the cause of the the loop to stop but otherwise it means we didn't find the target so just return null. okay so this is the the idea of the delete method and that brings us to the end of this lecture we shall practice uh, all this method that we have seen in the lab and actually be able to write more operations for our singly linked list class thank you very much